Good morning and welcome to The Positive Habit. I hope you're well. Ciao, buongiorno. Um, while I've been here in Italy, I've had lots of lovely time to relax and do some reading. So I've got two books for you this month and I love to start um, the month with book recommendations. So this month I've actually got a non-fiction and a memoir for you. So I'm going to start with the non-fiction, which is Your One Wild and Precious Life by Dr. Maureen Gaffney. Now, if you know Dr. Maureen Gaffney's work, you'll know that she puts in a huge amount of solid research. Her first book was called Flourishing, and that was hugely based in terms of positive psychology and applying a lot of the principles to help us from that research to, to flourish and to be happy. This book is different in the sense that it is equally positive in tone. You know, you can the title says it all. Your one uh, wild and precious life really sums up what it is conveying. And that is that we want to make the most of our time here on Earth, on this planet. And we really need to, I suppose, um, make that effort, which is really giving time to examine our lives. And that's what this book does in huge uh, detail. She says, um, Dr. Maureen Gaffney said that, you know, she had intended to write the book in a year and it took three years. So you can see that when you actually go through it, just how much um, she has has researched. Um, what's lovely is that she's broken up the different phases of our life and really looked at what it is that we need to cultivate at different stages in terms of um, our development and for positive well-being. And also that now more than ever, we're living longer. And as a result, we need to sort of really embrace that second half, if you like, of our lives. And this is brilliant because she says that we, I at this point, I'm 47, I'm a young adult. I was like, wow, I never thought I would thought. If anything, they'd say I was middle-aged. But no, she breaks it down that um, we start off with infancy. Then we have our early childhood. So infancy is uh, birth to two years of age. Early childhood is two to six. Middle childhood is seven to 11. Adolescence is puberty to late teens. Emerging adulthood, I like that. Emerging adulthood is late teens to early 20s. Uh, I think that's a really good term when you think back or maybe you are there at this point in your life in that, you know, you really are emerging in your in your um, early 20s. And yet there's this kind of expectation on you to be a fully fledged adult, which you're really not um, able to deliver, if you like. Uh, young adulthood is early 30s to late 40s. And um, then we have middle age, which is uh, so that's where I am in this late 40s. And then middle age doesn't start till we're 50. OK, and that goes on to late 60s. Then we have a late adulthood. Great. And that is late 60s to late 70s. And then we have old age, which is 80 and onwards. So isn't that that's I think that's a really lovely way of actually breaking down our lives. Um, I really do recommend this book in terms of going through your life. She does a huge amount of work on uh John Bowlby's attachment theory, and that runs through the course of each stage of life, whether you have a secure attachment, avoidant or anxious. Those are the sort of main cohort of different types of attachment and how they play out with your later relationships and how they play out with your work also. And um, one thing I would say is that Although there's so much research, it would be nice to have more maybe practical exercises in the book in terms of journaling or even just how to sort of navigate, you know, more kind of practical uh, aspects. But apart from that, you know, I really do think it's, it's, it's well, well worth a read. It'll lift you up and it is. It's got that lovely um, positive uh, sort of energy, especially towards the end that really makes you feel that lovely glow of, yes, I am going to make the most of my one wild and precious life. That leads me on to my second book. Now, you will have, may have heard of this, and this is somebody who really did and does make the most of their one and precious life, and that is Elizabeth Gilbert, Eat, Pray, Love. 
Now, I have never read this book. I have kind of seen the film. To be honest, the film kind of annoyed me a little bit, but I wanted to keep an open mind. So I thought I'll try the book and I definitely preferred the book. Isn't that quite often the case? And um, yeah, I really enjoyed this in terms of getting into the mind of Elizabeth and just the courage that she um, showed by going to Italy, then she went to India and she went to Indonesia. And there's just a beautiful, fluid sort of um, energy going through it in terms of her experiences and also how she starts to grow. So you kind of grow with her, if you like, um, through her own challenges. A lot of the anxieties, a lot of the fears that she has are really relatable. You know, she's come out through a divorce. I don't know if you know the book, if you've read the book or seen the movie, um, you know, that she has recently come out of a divorce that was very messy. Then she goes and she has a, a relationship with this um, younger guy who is, um, she meets through yoga and he has a guru in India and that sort of opens up this whole new world for her. However, that relationship is also quite, you know, um, tumultuous, let's say, and comes to an end before she travels really, or it's kind of filled, what's that word, fizzing out. Um, and she, she really sort of looks at finding, first of all, in India, she wants pleasure in, uh, sorry, in Italy, she wants to find pleasure. So, so it's brilliant. It's like I was reading it here and it's like, yes, she's right. I'm going to eat all those ice creams and do all these things because it's so pleasurable. Um, and then she goes to India to really look at more finding her um, inner world and what's happening within herself. And then she goes to Indonesia to find a balance between these two and um, sort of being devoted to the inner world and then also our relationship with the external. So I do recommend it. It's also really funny, the character she meets, you know, she sounds like a kind of person you would have great fun with. Um, so I recommend those are my two books. Thank you for watching. Namaste and lots of love.